Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. When we create visuals in Power BI, at default, we normally pay attention to the high numbers or the key performance indicators. In this case study, we've calculated actual revenue, actual cost, and actual profit. But beyond these numbers, sometimes we want to give the user further and better details. In some cases, we use the slicer to break down. But beyond slicers, you could also use two key features in Power BI. These are the drill down features and the drill through features. In this case study, which is a sales dashboard, what we basically have done with the drill through feature is that we have details of the products and customers that are driving our revenue lines. Okay, so the top products, the top customers, the ones that are not doing too well, we've also created them in the bottom section of this report. Now, what the drill through will help you do is that if you are doing your presentation, you could actually highlight one of the regions, in this case, Ashanti region. You have the option to drill down. You can choose to drill down, which takes you to a level below the region attribute, in this case, city or town or any other details. Then there's also the drill through which is going to link us to the driver's page that you saw. So if I go to the driver's page, I'm now seeing what is essentially driving revenue in the Ashanti region. So top three products, top three customers at the top, and then bottom three products, bottom three customers at the bottom. Right. With a drill through feature, you can link it up to any detailed page that is attached to your main page. Okay, so that your story can be complete. It's interactive, you can always come back. Okay. This is the sequel or part two of an earlier video that we shared where we accomplished or created this first page. So we've shared the start file with you, which is the complete version of the first page so that you can come along and then build the second page step by step. So if you are game, download the files and let's get started. Okay, so this is the start file, which essentially is the completed version we created in part one of getting started with Power BI. So if you are new to this case study, you can go to our YouTube channel. So this is the complete video, getting started with Power BI, a beginner's case study. I've also shared the link. You can click on it to refer to how we created the page one. So we are essentially creating a page two of this sales report. So basically we want to insert a new page. So I'll just click on this plus sign and it creates this new page. We can rename this drivers. Okay. So I'll just double click and then rename this drivers. Okay. So as I indicated, this page is going to give us further and better details of the customers and products that are driving our actual revenue. We'll limit it to the top three and bottom three in each case. Now, in the earlier video, we also shared the PowerPoint background that we used for the final visual. So if you follow the first case study, we had the slide one, which was used as background for the first case study. We've also shared the second slide with you. So we want to use the second slide as the background for the driver's page, which we are about to create. So what we normally do is that we'll save the slide as an image file. So let's do that quickly. So save as, you can press F12 or go to file, save as. And then over here, you can save it as a JPEG or PNG or SVG file. So I'll choose a JPEG for this. I'll save it in my downloads. And so I'll proceed with just this one and my image is saved in my downloads. Okay, so when I come to my page, I need to right click and then choose Format Canvas, right? So when I choose Format Canvas, I have the option to change the canvas background. So I'll do that. I'll come to Image, click Browse, and this is where I save my file. So I'll just double click and it loads into the Power BI desktop. Now you may not see anything because your transparency is set to 100%. So we'll reduce this to 0% and you see that your background is now in place. Now 
we are going to use this background as a guide to create four decomposition visuals. So maybe you have not used a decomposition visual. It's one of the AI visuals. So if you go through the list, you notice that this second icon here is the decomposition tree. Okay, so if I click on it, it basically comes like this. Okay, so this is the placeholder. Okay, so with a decomposition tree, basically what you are doing is that you take any measure, revenue, cost, profit, and try and explain it, break it down using any of the attributes in your data. So as an example, I can take, in this case, I'll go to my measures and I'm going to choose actual revenue. Okay, so this is my total revenue, 6.7 million. How did we come about 6.7 million? So with a decomposition tree, I'm essentially working backwards, branching out with attributes to explain the 6.7 million. So in my explain by, I can do by one attribute or stack multiple attributes. So I'll come to my explain by. Then for starters, let's explain this by product name. So I'll choose product name. Okay. The moment I click, you see that I have this plus sign here, which means that I can branch out. Now, I have some default options here. So I can show the field with the highest value for this metric. So by default, it will just run in descending order which fields or values are affecting or driving this. I can also do the inverse, which is the low value. I have only one attribute here, so it's always going to be on the product. So this is the product that I have. So I'm going to choose an explanation by the product name. So when I click on it, you'll notice that it now creates branches that actually gives me a breakdown of the actual revenue by product. Okay. So that is how it works. I can add another attribute to this. So in the explain by, I can come in here and then choose maybe customer name. Now, in this case, the moment I add customer name, you notice that at the end of each branch or node, I get the option to split and then see the particular customer that is also driving this product. Okay, so again, I can choose customer here. So Ultra HD Smart TV, is the product that is giving us the highest revenue. And these customers ranked in descending order are those purchasing this Ultra HD Smart TV. So that's how it works. I can actually now click and then try and see the customers that are related to each of the products. Okay, so that is how the decomposition tree works. Now, for this case study, we are just going to use one level, which is the product name. Then later we duplicate it for customer. So this is our first visual, breaking down actual revenue by product name. But we don't want to see all the product names. We just want to limit it to the top three. So we want to filter this to just the top three. So to do that, you select the visual, you come to the filters pane. So over here, you see the filters on this visual. Our focus is to filter on product name. Okay, so as I indicated, I'm taking out customer name. So we are left with only the product name. So we want to filter on product name to just the top three. So to do that, you drop this down, then you change basic filtering to top N. Okay, so top N gives you top, you put in your index, in this case three. We want to filter top three by a certain measure. In this case, it's actual revenue. So in the buy value section, we'll go to our data icon here, click on it. Then you open up measures. Even though actual revenue is checked, what you need to do is click on the name of the measure and drag it to the buy value section. Okay, so we are filtering top N, top three, buy value, which is the actual revenue, and then we'll apply our filter. So what this will do is that it will now reduce this to just the top three products. Okay. So this is our first decomposition tree where we want to see the top three products driving actual revenue. So now that we've done this, we can just format it a bit to create more space. So I'll click on this format and over here under the size and style. Okay. If you scroll up, you have the option for pattern. Okay. So in the option for padding, we just want to create a little space above so that it fits nicely. So 
for the margin on top instead of five we put in zero and then we do same for the one below which is also zero okay so that this can create some space right so that is all the format we are going to do so now that we are done with this because i want customers as well i'm going to copy this control c and then paste this control v okay so you just slide it off it and make sure it's aligned okay because we are using a backdrop ensure that your visual actually sits directly in the backdrop okay so we have something like this so this time around instead of breaking it down by product we want to break it down or explain it by customer so i'll come to my data icon then for product name i'm going to swap it and replace it with customer name i'll come to customers and then choose customer name usually it will reset so you just have to come hit the plus sign and then click to review your top three customers okay so this now gives us product name and customer name now we want to reverse this which products are bottom three which customers are bottom three we've already set the layout in the earlier visuals so i'm going to click on the product control c step out control v and then slide this make sure that it's aligned so once i drag this here the first thing i want to do is i'll go to the filters pane this visual is currently highlighted earlier we did this by top three so i'm going to edit this i'll drop this icon down and instead of top you know what to do we will change from top to bottom so once you change this you have to apply the filter now after doing this we want to change the color from green to red so that at least we can appreciate the contrast between the bottom and the top so earlier we came to the format icon so i'll click on it come to more options it's already opened okay so here we'll come to the section on tree click this go down to connectors okay so connectors are the lines it is currently green so i'm going to change this from this green to this red here so that would change this from green to red now beyond the connectors we also want to change the bar okay so after the tree section you also see the bar section so over here you come down to colors and then we change the positive bar from this green to the red okay so this will now give us the bottom three products so once you are done with this just as we copied and change the customer and change the product to customer we'll do same so i'll click on this Control c step out Control v and i'll slide this all the way to the right make sure it's aligned using the red guides okay so instead of product name just as we did earlier i'll come here and then swap product name for customer name so i'll come to customers and then choose customer name okay so i'll come in here and then choose customer name so i now have all my four visuals so i have now completed all my four visuals the top half is showing us top three for product and customers bottom showing us the bottom three for product and customers okay now we want to bring in a slicer to break this visual down by region so in this space we want to insert a slicer so i'll select the space come in here and then insert this default legacy slicer here we want to bring in the regions so i'll click on add data go to location and then scroll down to region okay so this is my slicer so by default it gives me the vertical list so i'm going to change this i'll go to the format option go to more options go to slicer settings and instead of the vertical list i'm going to choose a towel okay so once you get a towel you can stretch it down a bit and then maybe squeeze it in so that you have all the 10 regions showing in one column so this is the style we are going to use for this visual okay so i now have my 10 regions here okay now what is important is that when you are creating the drill through between two pages at least you should have something common an attribute that is present in the first page and the second page 
So in this case, we have region used as a slicer here. Over there, we also have region used to break down our column charts in the x-axis. Okay, so now that we have this, the next step is we want to set this page as a drill through page. Okay, every page you create in Power BI is a standard page, but you can use it for other things. So please come and click on any empty space, not the visuals in the page, but any empty space. So once you click on it, you should see page information, right? So if I click on page information, you see the name of the page, which is drivers. The type is standard. I'm changing this to a drill through page. So I'll select drill through. Then I need to now choose which field or which attribute I'm going to use. So I'm going to drill through from our app data, come to location, and then I'll choose region. Okay. So by this, if region is selected on that first page, it comes through to filter what I have on the second page. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Now, once you do this, you'll notice that an icon pops up on the top left section of this page. Now, this allows you to connect to the previous page once the drill through brings you to this current page. In Power BI desktop mode, you have to use control and click. Okay, so control and click will bring you to the default page. So this is where we are. Now let's test and see if this is working. Usually, if I just hover on the bar, I should see the drill down and the drill through feature. If you don't see this, you could also right click. Okay, so I can right click and you should see the drill through feature here, which connects to the page that we just dedicated as a drill through page. In this case, the drivers. Okay, so because I started from the Ashanti region, the idea is that if I click on drivers, it's going to filter my slicer okay, to the Ashanti region and all the visuals on this page are going to be filtered by the Ashanti region. You get the idea. So at this point, I can control click using the top left icon, come back here, choose any other. So I can right click, drill through from the northern region, go to drivers. This time around, we see the northern and the details show for the top revenue products, top spending customers, and so on. So the drill through feature basically allows you to add a certain layer of analysis, if you like, as a second page to your default page, which we had here as KPIs. So once you have that common field or column, you can now set the drill through feature and it connects both pages. So hopefully you got something that can improve the way you present your Power BI reports. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you in the next video. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.